Hi, everybody. Welcome to your Tuesday marketing call. My name is Lee Hanish. I'm joined by Fred Solomon. How are you, Fred? Hey, good morning, Lee. Good morning. Great. Uh, we're all here. We get here every uh, Tuesday by nine o'clock. There should at least be one email in your email box for those of you that are regulars to be here on this call. Shout out to everybody who made it. Good crowd. It's all our regular crowd. So it's nice to see everybody here. Uh, we were just talking about my wild Saturday night, uh, midnight to about 1 a.m. on Saturday night here in Vegas at the corner of Tropicana and Las Vegas Boulevard, where by a set of circumstances that we discussed earlier, uh, you don't need the details on it, long drawn out story, but my phone was dead. Um, I just had ID, I had no cash. And the fact was, is that I walked away with six client leads between the hours of 12, 12 p.m. at 1 a.m., which looking back on it now is literally ridiculous on a scale that I can't even begin to share, which are people just afraid in real estate to start asking people about real estate, Fred? I mean, that's really what I learned. I mean, and and we'll go through it. The the What I basically was asking people, which was more for my own personal knowledge for understanding people who work in Vegas. I only talked to people who worked in Vegas. I wasn't trying to get any of the tourists that were around after the concert or any of those things. Um, I talked to employees of hotels. Um, how's the staffing here? You know, I'd, I'd make a little bit of small talk. And then my question always became, do you rent or do you own? And the first three, there were two people who owned. And my question was, are you taking advantage of the equity in your house before it goes away? You know, I was thinking about it and I've seen the news. I see that the prices are going down. I go, yeah. So that equity is not static. It, it, it adjusts with the market and that money that's there now won't be there later. And I said, I would imagine based on the recession, the, the hotels are still probably looking at laying people off in the winter when things get rough. Um, and I actually asked, there were a couple of hotels that I found out that have laid off partial amounts of staff on the strip in preparation. The corporations are taking those they're laying off some of the staff. So those are real concerns of the people. So what did I learn? Kind of know the know what's going on in the individual markets, right? Know the news of kind of what's going on in the individual markets. I'm not saying you need to be an expert. And I'm certainly not saying you need to spend the crazy amount of hours I do consuming content. You'll go crazy. Um, I think I've shown that over the last six months that you can go certifiably crazy trying to consume all the content that's being fed. Uh, and my whole thing on, I, I just couldn't believe that I kept walking away with, Hey, can I get your number? The minute they say to me, Hey, can I get your number? The only thing I was pissed off about only thing I was pissed off about was my phone was dead. Okay. That's when I got unhappy. Now I'm not able to send a text or confirm phone numbers. Now I'm relying on them to get a hold of me, right? There aren't pens at the slot machine. So I had to rely on these individuals. Uh, I got a couple of business cards, but I had to rely on people contacting me, which is a mistake from a marketing standpoint, because nobody is going to do that. Nobody's going to do that. But I think the bigger lesson here is to look at this semantically, right? Um, good word, uh, Terrell, semantically. Um, so what was I really after? What I was really after was I wanted to know what the employees of the hotel were like because they are the highest unit of individuals with jobs who are renters and owners, right? In, in Las Vegas, I wanted to know, excuse me, if the recession was affecting them, I'm going to need water in a second. I wanted to know if the recession was affecting them. More importantly, how many people did I run into that rented and how many people owned? It was more data collecting, but the data collecting turned into, 
I'm not having deep conversations with him, Fred. These weren't, you know, I'm only getting five or 10 minutes before a security guard's got to go and, you know, get a drunk or cocktail waitress has got to go talk to somebody else or, you know, the, the guy who's a, a casino host has to go do whatever they do. <laughs> so these aren't long interactions. Can this be replicated? Is this a logical way to start list building? So if you, from a mechanical standpoint, in a day-to-day -day life, you don't, you don't like to do it, do you? You don't like to chat up and ask those kinds of questions, do you? Uh, it's, it's not my, I mean, my personality is to bring it up, but not in that aspect. Um, but look, uh, that's grassroots. That's like grassroots politics. That's like going into communities and shaking everybody's hand. And it's like knocking it. But what's the difference between that and knocking a door really? And that all agents do that. Right. It's actually a better approach than knocking at a door. If you're going to go door knocking, I would actually do what you just did on Friday or Saturday night. But my real question is, Lee, how did you get home? I walked. I walked seven <laughs> miles. <laughs> you, did, you did not disclose that part. Okay, yeah. So the funny haha -ha part of the joke, by about one o'clock, I realized I had to walk. So if you really want to figure that out, and let's say I'm cruising at about a 20 to 30 minute pace. If you want to do the math on that one, Fred, uh, I believe my head hit the pillow <laughs> at 545. <laughs> oh, my and God. I slept through the first 45 oh, minutes of the charger game. Yeah. Got about five hours of sleep, turned around, started <laughs> watching football all day and started, oh, yeah. uh, making burgers and chicken yeah that that's it i i just appreciate people and, and i love the line you must have a lot of equity in your home i think that's a great 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 line if they own you must have a lot of equity in your home i think yeah, that's you a must great... have a lot well that's what isn't that what the dimwit said on the video i'm sorry the chief economist i don't know if she's a dimwit she did come off dimwitty ish um <laughs> to say that, oh, most people have equity. Cool, then I might as well just be able to say it because that's the way it works in real estate. We're told to use these lines that realtor.com, um, National Association of Realtors, most people have equity. It's a common line when in fact, people know they have equity. They're just not doing anything about it. Nobody knows what to do with it next, Fred. Well, the next statement after that, but you must have a lot of equity you know, and then the prices have dropped 20% in the last six months in Vegas. And we know that. And so, you know, then, then a lot of people, you know, oh yeah, I heard about that. Oh yeah. Um, I'm thinking about selling. Oh yeah. This, oh yeah. That, you know, you get a lot of, oh yes. Um, I just wrote a Facebook post that I think uh, we should share this morning. And, and I think uh, you will find it to be very, very, very informative. And um, if you can pull it up real quick, I think it will be yeah. very good to share with people because. And by is... the way, and by the way, the double, it, as I've always figured, the double, the complete close on every single person, Fred, just open up your phone and type in home advocates. I uh -huh. didn't even go crazy. It was not even a hard close at that point. Uh huh. All right. What am I looking for, Fred? Uh, just the most recent Facebook post that I did on my Facebook you wall. It. You got it. All right. Facebook. Let me do a screen share for everybody. Eesh. Uh, more. I know my mine are books. I know I write a book, but it's all right. Share. Let's see what fun pops up on my Facebook right now. There we go. Sometimes you have to. Here. You need to do it. Oh, there we go. I'm good. Yeah, I got it. You're on both of my profiles, I believe. So we don't have any problems. I don't even know. Oh, I'm on Home Advocates. That's why. Pfft, silly. I hate this new system, Fred. I hate it. I hate changing the profiles. I hate it. 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 I mean, I understand why they're doing it, but boy, do I hate it.
it's making me crazy. All right. Uh, okay. There you are. It's down that first one. The one that wrote this one? 40, 45 minutes ago. Cool. Expand that. Okay. Let's, let's read this together. When people and realtors investors say this, oh, the real estate market is fine. The market is shifting. I ask them, what makes you say that? What data are you analyzing to make you come up with that statement? Is it just a feeling you have? Here's the data you need to pay attention to. Number one, default and forbearance data. It's hard to research the data, but the lenders, Zillow, Redfin, all have it. When Zillow says, when Zillow sells all their properties and loses $880 million and predicts housing prices to increase 11% in 2022, I call BS. Affordability. Interest rates have increased from 2.65 to 6.5% as of yesterday, 4% higher in 12 months. On a million dollar loan, that's $40,000 a year. Higher interest, they will be paying approximately $3,300 a month higher monthly payment. Unemployment. The economy is gaining jobs at record numbers, 500,000 plus two months ago, 300,000 plus last month. If and when the economy starts losing jobs, that's when we should see the interest rates drop. If GDP is negative in the third quarter, which just ended, ended over the weekend in September, it would be the third state, straight quarter of negative GDP, then rates should drop. The employment data is released the first Friday of every month. Personally, I think the jobs data is the most important info to pay attention to to see when these rates are to see when these rates are dropping or, or where these rates are going. Inflation versus recession. Inflation, which causes rates to go up, and negative GDP are in a battle to see which way, which way these rates go. It's been, in, it's been inflation winning out recently, causing affordability issues, higher interest rates, and lower home prices, which is what the Fed wants. So, you know, Lee's been saying higher interest rates. I've been saying if we've been, if we go into a recession, you know, which we technically already are in a recession, but they're calling it a housing recession, then, you know, it's, it's how many quarters of negative GDP are we going to have? And before they cry and, uncle, basically. Right. And, and how many people are going to start losing their jobs? And when we have job loss, that's when we need to worry about prices coming down. So number four, uh, number five is population growth. For the first time in 40 plus years, California's population is decreasing for the last two years. Income. Yes, they're, they're all out here with me now. They've all moved yep. to Vegas. And, and uh, Boise, Idaho, I've heard too. Uh, income. Wage growth is increasing at 5 plus percent per year, but inflation is in the eight plus percent range. If the economy starts losing jobs, look out below for real estate prices. If you have a job, you can pay rent. If you lose your job, you got to go sleep on mom and dad's couch. In Vegas, prices are down 20 percent in the last six months. We're seeing price drops around 15 percent in SoCal in most areas and price ranges. Under $500,000 condos and homes still seem to be getting a few offers on them in many SoCal areas. South Florida seems to be the anomaly and values are holding incredibly well. Housing is gonna be even more crazy there as residents of the hurricane hit areas for, as residents of hurricane hit areas search for housing due to the hurricane. Uh, so for all the people who said they, uh, who said what they said or say what they say about the market up, down, sideways, better have the above data at their fingertips to be able to say such info intelligently. Oh, and uh, by the way, we've been predicting price drops since last year when it wasn't trendy to be saying that on our, so anyways, that's, and then I promoted right. your. That's nice. Well, and let's break this down. And what I actually, I used a lot of this that's in here, right? So these are the conversations that people think they should be having, but 
don't know they should be having. I, I think I said that correctly. Um, so if you look at it from a systematic standpoint, I probably could have run across people who had missed payments, right? The one that I saw uh, most importantly that I started with was unemployment. These are corporations here in Vegas. They employ the greatest number of people in the hotel industry. MGM, Harris, uh, the other group that owns the other stuff. There's three or four, including the station. With stations, I think it's like four major you know, corporations that own most of Vegas, right? You've got Station Casino literally blowing up casinos and rebuilding at this point, right? They they held their money back and now they're going to close casinos, tear them down, build new resorts to prepare for the future. Um, and it certainly worked its way all the way down to people who work security, people who work as cocktail waitresses, people who, you know, who are VIP casino hosts or or whatever their jobs are. The next word that I used, which was important, was recession. Okay, I completely agree with all this data, but again, explaining it to a common person who, how do I say this without, hi, can I, can you repeat what you are hearing about Boise, Idaho? Oh, people are moving up to Boise out of California, Chen. Cut the tail end of that remark. There you go. Yeah, you guys need help. You guys have a little bit of inventory happening up there. You guys were always predicted as the first to show uh, drops in prices, which was interesting to me. Um, you in New York. Uh, population growth. Uh, and uh, this is the big one. I use the 20% thing. I think you can't overwhelm clients. I, When I am talking to hotel staff or the people that I was talking to, I wouldn't say that I was dumbing it down. I was just asking questions of what they knew. Does, does that make more sense, Fred? I didn't, I, I could have wowed them with stats and numbers and, and done all that. <clears throat> but I wanted to know, what are you seeing? What are you hearing? Oh, That's no, I know of hotels that are laying people off. I know, ba, 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 ba. That's a smarter approach. Yeah. Uh, out in and, public then, and, then, and then and then and then I think it's okay to insert data on top of it, right? We're in a recession going into the last quarter, and you guys are going to be slower in the winter month. He goes, Yeah, hotels are laying people. That's how I got to the hotels are laying people off. They're even cutting back staff further in uh I don't want to say because I'm recording which particular hotel I was in at the time, but let's just say it's one of the biggest ones here in town that's already cutting back its staff preparing for the winter says a lot about this town and will and what I told to the people who own well will that increase the amount of equity because most people have equity right will that increase your equity or will that reduce the equity oh I, well I think that would mean the prices go down I go yeah and your equity won't be there you might want to look into taking some of that out and keeping it as a nest egg so it's those conversations I didn't work very hard and I was being served cocktails while it was happening, Fred. I mean, it seems a lot better than knocking on doors in 98 degree weather to me. Yeah. Well, because you're not catching them off your guard. You're, you're not catching them during their daily routine. And as Terrell said, uh, if they work from home, you're not interrupting their day and frustrating them because they got other stuff they need to do. So, you know, it's, they're out and about you know, they may be on their way to meet somebody or something like that, but if they're just hanging out on the one-armed bandit or hanging out, you know, and it's a cocktail waitress coming up and giving you drinks, you know, obviously she's working, but you can bend her ear for a few minutes, I'm sure. Yeah, it just, and I don't think that I was using anything that I would consider solid openers. Now, I was in a higher-end hotel. So that may have had something to do with it. I was in one of the corporation casinos next to the T-Mobile arena um, at the Park Hotel, to be exact. 
So I'm in a nicer location than say if I was at the four Queens, right? I, you know, I don't know if their tips and the money they make at the four Queens is comparable to what they make at the park. Do the security guards make more money? I didn't put that much thought into it. I was just more into I'm killing time and I'm getting drinks. Well, what do I do for a living? Well, we could talk about marketing, but I don't want to talk about marketing. Nobody ever wants to talk about marketing. Like they really don't. Believe it or not, when you tell people marketing, that's a turnoff. Um, <laughs> I am seeing more of an eye opener because of the way the media has shifted and getting more of a conversation started. What do you do? Uh, you know, I work with, with uh, I, I run an advocacy group and we help people uh, understand the real estate market. Do you rent or do you Oh, That's it. I, I work for a home advocacy group. You all do. You're all a part of it. You're all on page one. You you all have, I, we're back to marketing method number one. And I'm just now realizing that in the back of my phone right now was my tap card. And I probably should have tapped a few phones before I left. That might've been the cocktails, Fred. Might've been. I, I just thought about it right now. I'm like, I was so obsessed with trying to figure out how to order an Uber without a phone that, uh, it never even dawned on me to uh, do what they do in survival situations, which is take out. I watch survival shows. It's one of my uh, biggest uh, unplugs. I didn't No, my, my tap phone would definitely work on their phone, not on my phone. My ta I didn't use my tap card on their phones. That's on me. I didn't assess my situation correctly. I checked my pockets. I had a key to the front door. Um, I did not check to see what actual cards I had on the back of my phone. I just knew my phone was off and I was frustrated. Uh, where do you get a tap card? Very good question, Rick. If you go into the um, coaching group, I do a whole video about what we're talking about right here. I used it. Um, let me log in. Do, 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 do. I will show you. Let me go back to my library. Uh, I got to go on through Home Advocates. Let's see how this works. All right. So if you click on Home Advocates Coaching, right, from the main page for everybody who's a coaching member, nice pop up, Lee. Working like a true marketer. Why won't you let me log in here? Uh, all right, let me do it the other way. Uh, let me go in and show this to you. I, the tap card is on me. I don't carry business cards when I'm out. A lot of people do. Um, I don't. It's not my thing, personally. All right, so there. There's the main site. All right, so um, my library. There we go. Let me resume share there, right? So all of you that are in the Platinum group, you have three products, right? The Platinum Explanation, the board, which we don't use because we talk about everything here. <laughs> this is the most wide open forum on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for answering questions about anything. On the Hub, I'm probably going to get rid of the first two and just rename the Hub to everything you need to be successful. Right here, Rick where it says face-to-face -face marketing method. Um, so this one was based on um, the testimonial card. But if you go to create your own business card, I believe I put it in here. There's next day flyers. I don't. Huh. All right. I'll make sure to add that in here today so that you can see. I'll add a third one for a tap card. But a tap card... Let me show it off. This one's based on a business card because most people are still very old school and use business cards. But a tap card looks like this. Okay. Turn my camera on. Stop the share. Stop the share. There you guys go. This is a tap card. It's what it looks like. So on the front, it says my name. On the back is barcode. It's got an RID chip in it. So when you take it to a cell phone, 
turn my cell phone on, right? You tap the back of it. It automatically, ooh, I did, let me do it all again. I'm gonna clear them all out so you can see it one more time. Uh, you don't even need it on. iPhones work specifically well. So that's the front page of my site. You tap the back, the little edge, and it automatically brings up the information. And when you click on it, yeah, that's I blew good. it. I had this with me, Fred. I'm a blow it, complete blow it on this one. Then it brings up a whole page about me wow. and my resume. I use it at marketing events and I forgot it was still in there. Dangerous what a couple of cocktails will do at midnight on a Saturday in Vegas. Gotta have it. They're dirt cheap. They're cheaper than buying actual business cards. This one card, you can get pretty much whatever you want, including your own personal logo on the front. Um, I just did my signature on the front and the barcodes on the back for most Androids. Androids don't seem to, they seem to have some kind of shielding from the RIDs. Uh, unlike the uh, I Apple iPhones, you just tap the back, they go. Uh, Androids, you've got to scan the barcode on the back. I will post that info, Rick. Happy to do it. I'll uh, get a link and I'll get it out for the company that I used. And then you just set up a page. It's all drag and drop. I just dragged and dropped and create. It gives you a custom web page. Um, you can have videos. You can whatever you want up on that page. Simple Pretty as that. Cool. Yeah, and it always goes back to the same conversation. I. It's weird it's, over the, I don't the last couple of weeks. Cards. The what? I don't, I don't carry business cards. So that's. And people ask for my number quite a bit. And they're like, you don't carry business cards? That's normally perfect. in those situations. Um, normally in those situations, I text the person that I'm with, right? Text me your name right now. Here's my number, right? If you get lost, go to Home Advocates. That's me on the front page. That's my cell phone. Call me. Um, that card has done more for me business wise when I am out networking. Um, and now even on Saturday, I, I wish I had used it. I would have not had the problem I'm having today, which is I have a couple of business cards instead of cementing my position with those people. And, and certainly a phone that actually had cell phone power, I would have literally had them text me once their information was on it. I Text me your name right now. Cool. I'll talk to you on Monday. Um, does the card also load your V-card contact to the phone as well, or just the leads to the web pages or both? So it's a V-card that goes directly uh, for Apple people. It does V-card directly in and goes directly into uh, their saved contacts. I don't know for Androids. You Android people, I, I don't, you live in a different universe. By the way, I use nothing but IBM uh, uh, or um Windows-based products at home, out on the street, I still think that Apple's iOS system is far more effective for the amount of work that I do out on the street. It runs really fast on 5G. Um, Windows-based phones and Google products don't seem to run as fast in the 5G environment. You can argue that with me. I think your phones are way cooler than Apple's. But um, by and large, yeah, I've always had an Apple phone. I've always used uh, Windows based uh, because that's what I was taught on. And they started on Apple. Then I went to IBM, which is the beginning of Windows. Uh, I've been on Windows based since like Windows one or whatever the hell that was. Um, I've been around since the beginning with Microsoft. So I'm just more comfortable in that environment. That's a long explanation. But I, I think the important part of the story, getting off track, um, Going back to you sharing the screen. Um, yeah, those th that's definitely that's definitely the the way to go about it. I think you're you're. Po I'm interested to see what your response. You haven't got responses yet. I know, and and I'm very surprised by that because it was. I even. I think it's and here's my question: Is it too technical? Right. I I got put in those situations where. 
Hit refresh on that, by the way. Yeah. Uh, my, my whole thing on Saturday and encountering people, which is definitely outside my comfort zone. I'm really bad at it. Let's see if you got, nope, nothing new. One hour in. Fred, you got a, you got I a added two, I added two things to it. Inventory levels, number seven, and uh, what's happened to the average days on the market and, uh, and also sales volume. What's happening to the sales numbers in the area they live? Well, now I'm so, obsessed yeah. with this. Now, for me, I'm obsessed with this. And I would say this to anybody who's here in Vegas. Um, I think you have an opportunity. I think you have an opportunity in San Diego where they're showing depreciation. Um, I think you have an opportunity in LA County. Orange County, not so much. It, it's okay, excluding a couple of cities. You're not going to be able to walk around the Disney Resort and get the same kind of interaction with employees. I, I don't think Orange County, they're further away from showing signs of people getting laid off or, or there being difficulty. I, it may have been a perfect storm here in Vegas, but the perfect storm is very logical. These are corporations that are going into the winter months. These are corporations that have real people in asset management positions. These are real corporations that worry about the bottom dollar, right? Um, and if you look at the landscape of Vegas, what are they doing more of here? They're building right now. They have plenty of money, right? They've been running at a third staff since COVID restrictions ended. And in fact, MGM was putting people in hotel rooms slightly after the pandemic. I mean, the lockdown was brief for the MGM Corporation. They got a couple of their hotels right up and figured out a way to keep people gambling and keep the lights on. Now, they cut their staffs back dramatically. And they've never really gotten anywhere close to what they had prior to the pandemic working in these hotels, which is why people are frustrated with Vegas. But I saw Vegas's numbers for this year. I just saw them recently on a, on a, on a news report. Hotels still made close to a billion dollars again in gambling revenue. And now they're getting you on parking and now they're getting like they're milking everything out and getting every dollar. So what are they doing with their money? They're building. They're building. They're cutting their salves all the way back, and they're going to use this time because they can get land cheaper, labor cheaper. They can get, um, uh, I would imagine, I don't know yet on building prices on that scale. I don't know. But I'm sure that the bids are starting to come in cheaper for fear of not getting work. So these are all things that I kind of know in the back of my head before I have these discussions of, What's it like for you, Mr. Security Guard here, boots on the ground, right? You know, I own, wow. So are you doing anything about that equity before it goes away? All of everything you said came into play. I just need to find a, you've got a dog and I'm sure you've had to give your dog plenty of pills, Fred. What, what's better, a little slice of cheese or a piece of a cookie? Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, with my pit bull, she'll eat anything I put in my hand and give to her. I I don't know. Um, um, I Carol don't know if cream cheese. <laughs> yeah, I don't know which one is more liked, but but that's will be. the point. Is how do we put cream cheese? Stuff it in a piece of hot dog. Now you're getting me fed, Sally. Um, always put it in a hot dog, and you're good to go. Um. How do we sugarcoat all of this? And then here's a good one. Um, Marvin was doing a street fair this weekend. Uh, Tivoli does, there are farmer's markets in Henderson, uh, Tivoli Square, up on the other side in Summerlin. These are nicer areas that are still doing outdoor farmer's markets with lots of local people. I, I don't, understand one of the I, I was coaching in a group i don't know back in 2021 or 22 whatever it was before i started this and i was explaining to a person that the best way she was going to get new clients uh in real estate and she also had a side hustle of doing purses i said why aren't you out like why aren't you out in santa monica why aren't you out in like, all you got to do is start a conversation. 
but we want to believe, and I'll say it again because it's still my running joke. What TikTok background do I need to attract attention? Who do I need to hire to make a Google ad for me that's, they got a new word, sticky. Love this one. This is the latest in marketing trends, so don't get caught up in it. Sticky Google ads, um, which means basically people stay on it, watch the content, and then go through whatever funnel it is to capture the information. And they're using this word sticky like it's a new thing. We have sticky ads and only pay for the people who really click on your ads that aren't bots, which, by the way, as long as it's an IP address, there's no way for them not. To, it's, again, a scam. Uh, I don't need to go into detail on it. So when we talk about marketing, I'm going to go back to it time and time again. It's always about creating the list. It's always about creating your list and bettering your list and adding names. Are you a buyer? Are you a renter? Are you a seller? That's it. Or, or have you missed payments? But you would fall into one of those three categories uh, anyway. But name, phone number, email, what category? Name, phone number. And in Fred's case, you send out one email per month. Now, if I had, how many is it? 18,000, Fred? Like, wh what's the crazy number on your list? <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I'm, I'll, it's 18. As of today, it is 18,345. Okay. If I had 18,345 past coaching students, okay. I would only send out one email per week and we would only do our three coaching calls. Like, yeah, they'd probably go out on coaching days, but like all the other stuff I did to really kind of start the company up where, as you guys have seen, I've laid way back on my email marketing as of late, way back, way back. Uh, and there's still 5,000 past students that I have. Um, hey, if you don't want to take advantage of it and you want to come next month and start paying the monthly fee and not be in the platinum group, who am I to stop you? I uh, like a good passive income, Fred. So if I want to get a thousand old students who want to pay me indefinitely $97 a month for the old monster program without the automated call center, without having somebody actually pull their leads and keep them accountable, by all means, pay the 97 bucks and show up every, because they'll be here. If you guys don't know this, agents will desperately look for a drink of water based on all eight of these items. Real estate people know this now. This is the one thing I do know. Real estate and mortgage people know items one through eight for sure, Fred. Know it for sure. This is a real talk. But but most realtors, investors, homeowners, they give you an opinion based on a feeling, and it's not based on market data. It's a feeling and feelings can be hurt. Everybody has feelings and everybody's feelings can be hurt. Feelings can be right. Feelings can be wrong, but they are what they are. Feelings are feelings. All right. So this is where it goes back the other way. And why I spend, you know, 20 hours a day watching content. Now I'm looking and I'm telling you this, you can, there's a, I've got a, I've got stuff I'm going to show tomorrow. Now we're getting the head of Coldwell Banker, the broker for Manhattan uh, company, blah, blah, blah. Like those, those regular people who approximately six months to a year ago were all saying, what a great market. This is never going to end. Everybody jump on the party bus. Let's pop bottles and make it rain, right? Uh, this is the best time to be a real estate agent. Wasn't that long ago. Best time to be a real estate agent was a year ago. Right. So now you've still got that influx of people that came in that are now crashing out a year later, having difficulty to find this situation. And now what I'm seeing as uh, trending stories are people creating more content that is in alignment with those eight items. Right. So they're hopefully, doing. Hopefully are, they're no, they doing. no for a fact, for a fact, I can do it right now. I can literally I've got a fortune ad with four different brokers, not economists not the presidents, not the CEOs, just four random brokers in four markets. And that's a fortune article. That's a fortune article. Um, this is a trend now that I'm watching. I'm watching the trend happen on YouTube. And again, if you guys want that kind of trend to start happening, uh, first of all, turn your microphones on in the room all the time. 
And when you talk about what you want to see in your feed, because the AI will hear you on YouTube as well as Facebook. Uh, and then lastly, start searching for broker feedback on the market or just type in keywords. Um, same words here, default, forbearance, affordability, unemployment. Then look for only the last month when you run a search on any of those to topics, population growth, income versus wage growth, uh, inventory levels, sales volume, are prices up or prices down in Las Vegas? Are prices up or prices down in San Diego? Prices up, prices down. And look at the number of real estate agents and brokers that are creating content now and it's trending up. It's alarming how quick it's happened. So now this is the impression of real estate agents. It, it, nobody was doing short sales until 2008. Nobody was, I mean, yes, I realized when most of you came on board with me in the short sale genius days in 2007, you were smart, you were ahead of the market. Um, we're ahead of the market right now. We're still in that little bit of a space. But have you seen this other trend, Fred? And here's another good one. Have you noticed that they're starting all the Black Friday sales a month early? All of them. All of them. Mm -hmm. Amazon's doing theirs October 11th. Uh, Target's going to do theirs uh, in October. Wow. This is a trend. Now, why would, if everything was great, Fred, why wouldn't they just wait till the first day right after Thanksgiving for Black Friday? Why are we doing it a month early before the next set of numbers comes out? Because, Lee, it's only a recession for the housing market. That's it. Ah, there you go. It's a there housing recession. Thanks. I, and you know what? I've seen that one. And by the way, I, I recommend everybody should Google housing recession. It's right up there with my favorite terms like sticky Google ads. I, it's just a marketing term. A housing recession, that's ridiculous. Uh, housing always declines in value, historically. Historically, it always goes up and always goes down. But did everybody really think that we were going to get another 20% of growth year over year after these? It, I was watching, uh, who is it, Peter Schiff. Peter Schiff was doing, uh, I, I watched his breakdowns of the impact of the, doing a zero monetary value. Well, of course, prices were going to go up on houses. We had a zero, like we gave money away. We gave money away. Um, his greatest fear, like most economists, is the stagflation theory, right? Because he believes that the Fed can keep raising rates all they want. It's way too late. Horses way out of the barn and they're still printing money. And you've still got another two years of a very pro spending government. Bad news. This is going to go for a while. Well, there was a question here. Okay, um, hold on. Um, let me wrap this all up and we'll take questions off. This is a good oh, video okay. for everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody. If you're watching this video and you'd like to find out how to join Home Advocates, just go to homeadvocates.io or Google, much like I said on Friday, on Saturday night, just type in Home Advocates on whatever device you're on. That's us on line one. All those people listed on page one are people who are part of that program who are ahead of the curve. If you'd like to be ahead of the curve, click join coaching. It'll take you over to a page. You can sign up and we'll get you started this week and you will be meeting people next week. Take care.